Thank you, everybody, and welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting for August 8, 2018. Um, is there anyone here, if there's anyone here besides WACA-TV recording this meeting, could you let us know? All right, hearing none. All right, I'm going to. Hold on. Are we live, Miles? I'm not Miles? There we go. There we go. Okay. We're all set, Miles? All right, I'm going to just continue. All right, I would like to ask um, Mr. Oh. Mignani to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. If I, he would I be would like to defer to. Uh, Do you have a suggestion? Yeah, Gabe. Okay. Oh, that's a good Gabe, idea. Would you please come up and, and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. <laughs> Downstairs. <laughs> Look, he's all dressed up. He looks great. Yep. Thank you. Whenever you're ready. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. McGurry. Okay. All right. Vision statement. Who hasn't read it? Joe, why don't you read the vision statement? You got out of the Pledge of Allegiance, so. You were asking me, I would have put up my other <coughs> high glasses on. Uh, vision statement, the town of Ashland will be a prosperous and physically sound community with a full range of housing, business, cultural, educational, and recreational opportunities in a safe and attractive environment for residents and visitors. Thank you. Um, mission statement, Yolanda? The Ashland Board of Selectmen is dedicated to promoting responsible fiscal management, advocating for sustainable development and growth, and providing excellent municipal services which will enhance the quality of life in our diverse community. The Ashland Board of Selectmen is committed to providing clear goals and objectives for town management and creating effective engagement and public participation with residents, state legislators, and other elected officials in order to achieve our mission. Great, thank you very much. Okay, let's, uh, we'll begin with, citizen, is there anyone here for citizens' participation? Okay, thank you, Mark. Thank you. Uh, selectmen, long time, you'll see. Mm. I want, I want to do something which I hope the chairman will let me do. Uh-oh. Be careful. I want to reserve citizens' participation for what's on next on the agenda to go first. Now you want to go after? Okay. Sounds good. All right. We'll, <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll move ahead with the, Well, why don't we do our proclamation? Do you think that's a good idea at this point? Uh, you ready? That's fine. That's fine. Okay. You ready? Unless you think it's, yes. Okay. Unless that's someone else is coming for that. They don't know. But. So our next, uh, we're, we're going to deviate from our agenda just a little bit, and we're going to uh, proceed to a proclamation for Gabe Magurian. And uh, we've got a couple of uh, items here to commemorate. So Gabe, you have to come up here. He's more exercise than he's had in a month. <laughs> We're going to put you in the middle here, too. You get on that side. Oh, right. Yes, of course. So, all right. So first, the first thing is the, for folks that may or may not know Gabe, Gabe has been a fixture in town for, uh, for many, many years. And I'm just going to read a few highlights from a document that uh, the community center put together a few years ago. And Gabe was born in Boston in March 20th of 1925. So how old does that make you, Gabe? Nine, 93. 93 years old. So uh, Gabe is a local man, has lived in Ashland for 77 years. Uh, the last 21 years he's lived on Myrtle Street. Before Myrtle Street, he lived on a chicken farm known as the Brick House Poultry Farm on Corderville Road. That's right. Right? Yeah. Uh, so Gabe joined the, the Navy at age 17. Uh, and th th I love this line here. He was stationed in Brooklyn near Rockaway Breach and spent a, a lot of good times in Times Square. Now, that was when Times Square was really yeah. <laughs> a good time. Uh, in 1945, he returned to his farm in Ashland, joined the American Legion, and with his bonus money from the service, Gabe bought himself a horse and named him Silver. 
probably one of the nuttiest things he's ever done. Gabe rode Silver uh, right into Eber's drugstore, <laughs> formerly on the corner of Maine and Homer. Now, there's probably only a handful of people in this room that remember yeah. Eber's, but yeah. it's where yeah. the, and, and the Minimart is. So, uh, you think I'm crazy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, Gabe is very proud of his high school diploma, which re he received on June the 3rd of 2001, as part of a tribute to veterans who left school to join the service. Uh, he feels it's very important for children to study and learn right from wrong. Gabe would like to be recognized as a kind, generous, and funny person and his, his advice is to treat everyone well. So I can't think of any better advice than that. And uh, it's with, with great pleasure that uh, the Board of Selectmen uh, provide you with a proclamation, and I'll, I'll read it at this time. Whereas Gabriel Gabe Bugarin has been a resident of the town of Ashland for many years, and whereas Gabe was born in Boston, grew up in Ashland, and attended Ashland schools, and whereas Gabe at age of 17 joined the U.S. Navy, he was stationed in Brooklyn near Rockaway Beach, and whereas in 1945 Gabe returned to Ashland and Brickhouse Poultry Farm on Corderville Road, he joined the American Legion and purchased a horse that he named Silver, and whereas Gabe is well known in the community for being a kind, generous, and funny man. He has been a bus driver for the local motion bus and always takes his famous chocolate cake whenever a celebration arises. Now, therefore, we, the selectmen of the town of Ashland, do hereby proclaim Saturday, August the 11th, 2018, as Gabe Mugarian Day. We urge all residents to make known their appreciation for his devotion to the town of Ashland. We wish him good health and good fortune. So. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So I also want to make note that uh, we've got a, a great representation here from uh, from both the uh, community. Yeah, all my colleagues are over right, here. Right. Everybody from a group from the uh, community center yes. and also from the Council of Aging too. So yeah. thank you for joining us. Uh, today and I think Rob you've got a proclamation as well yeah and I, um, I have a house I have a proclamation from the from the House of Representatives uh, from representative Jack Lewis who has a Jack's got a little note in here thank you for your years of service to Ashland uh, see you again soon that's from uh, representative Lewis and here's a proclamation um, be it hereby known uh, to all that, the Massachusetts House of Representatives offers its sincerest congratulations to Gabriel Mugarian in recognition of your retirement and your over 15 years of service to the Ashland Senior Center. The entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses the hope for future good fortune and continued success in all endeavors. Given this fifth day of uh, April 2018 at the State House Bus, must be July, anyway. Congratulations, yeah. Gabe, and keep for your collection. Thank you. Thank, thank you. thank you. Thank you very much. Very I really appreciate it. Appreciate it. And I work with a, you know, I work with these people. Get a little closer. Get oh, I work with these people at the uh, senior center. And uh, uh, 15 years with Joanne Duffy, uh, we started together, I think, in that building. And uh, they've been awful nice to me all these years. And all the uh, elderly people that I uh, gave rise to in the last 15 years, half of them are gone because. Uh, by age, and uh, uh, I appreciate all the see they're doing for me now. Thank you very much. Good, thank you. Thank you. Yeah.
place is going to empty out. Now I think we want to. So, all right, Mark, did you want to um, continue with your? Let them go first. Because they get set of attention, I get self-casting. Great thing that would just happen there, and congratulations to Gabe all the time in years. And yes, be good and well to people. They always will be around for you. Good evening. Good evening. Mark Desoni, lifelong resident for Hawthorne Road. I'm here for two reasons. One, I came in earlier, Monday I think it was, and showed off my newest jewelry. Miles, can you get this slowly on camera? <laughs> this was, this was <laughs> given, it's, it's a turtle. It's a was turtle. given by Lieutenant David Irusi, Fire Department, as I was doing my watch docking down 81 West Union Street. That's not buried ahead too far, Mr. Joe. I, I can't look. <laughs> <laughs> it was given to me there as a water hose holder, and then he, I gave it back to him and said, okay. And he put a base on it, so now I could be the god turtle with the <laughs> likable ring. <laughs> and it is for the reasons why I thank, thank Dave for it. I mean him as family knowns, as well as Mr. Joe and I, we know family and all that stuff. This felt good when he did this and gave this to me. And we are now, David Irusi and now Joe, you, yeah, badges. Okay. I can't wait for something from you maybe in years come. Okay. I'm not gonna say anything about it. <laughs> It's been a long time, so I get a, I get a chance. That's a first. It is a first. And Mr. Cow, this tour could come over and check out the Warren Woods and make sure it's slowly going forth. Okay. <laughs> it's for a show of a good time to have and to behold. The second thing is, I saw the new signs around downtown. They look really nice. They're not big, not all sensations, but they are informational. I would like to ask Mr. Town Manager, yeah, it's your turn, Mr. Town Manager, if anything like that is gonna happen on 126. Um, I believe 126 is going to be completely redesigned from streetscapes to lights, probably have some wayfinding signage on there, yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh. Okay. And um, I'll make this short because there's, 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 uh, there's another there's citizens behind me that want to speak. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, yes, I know. At least we got me out front this time. The last time I was here, I was almost sleeping. Um, so thank you for Dave Iruza for, for this. And to the board, to the board of selectmen, it's been quiet so far. But the other thing is, the other glimpse I'm doing it's up on the 400 Cedar Street, the water tower, which there's going to be new Wi-Fi antennas going up. And I gave, well, it was at the zoning board the 24th, from the line, I gave all the plans, blueprints, and descriptions all through the fire department. And I was hoping that when the board of health comes back, they would get a say in what's going on, because there's going to be a lot going on there. But other than that, Cheryl is one show of a guy and thanking Dave Iverson. All right, thank you, Mark. Thank you. All right, anyone else for? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, KG Narena, 14 in Thomas Road, Ashland. I'm here, uh, standing here as a individual citizen here, not as a member of any of the committees or boards that I am on. Um, I came here just to present the two checks totaling for $500 for the Dementia Friendly Committee. I'd like to have this table on the next meeting and taken up as a donation. I'd appreciate that. Thank you. All right, thank you, KG. Thank, thank you. Thank you, KG. Very good, thank you. All right. All right, thank you again. 
Um, okay, so uh, we have um, the appointment of Lisa Uglioloro to the human as human resources director. Was I good at that? Did I make that? You know what? Pretty good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. I think he's been practicing. <laughs> Um, really, really good. Yes, so uh, tonight I'm, I'm really pleased to um, announce the appointment of our new Human Resources Director. Uh, for those of you in the audience that don't know, um, our initial HR Director, Greg Enos, left to become the Town Administrator in the Town of Avon. Um, and so we quickly embarked upon a, a search for a replacement uh, for Greg, for uh, Human Resources Director. Human Resources Director is really one of those positions that can be very, very difficult to fill, especially nowadays in the municipal world. It's become, um, it's really hard to find, I think, good, good people in a lot of different positions, but especially HR. Um, but I was pleased to see, I mean, we had 21 applications, um, which is a pretty good, healthy number. Um, a number of experienced HR professionals, either HR directors or assistant HR directors. Um, so we went through the process of uh, selecting one individual. Uh, and I'm pleased to announce that tonight, uh, Lisa Uglia Loro is uh, going to be appointed as the Human Resources Director for the Town of Ashland. Um, Lisa currently serves as the town or the Human Resources Director in the Town of Cohasset. So um, we have significantly shortened her commute, I think, <laughs> quite a bit. But she had, um, you know, she's got a great skill set, as you can see through the resume. Um, she you know, basically ran all facets of HR, has, uh, you know, experience whether it's just the mundane things like, you know, job descriptions and onboarding and processing personnel to some of the more, um, I say, I think cutting edge because you really don't find them a lot in municipal government now, but like, you know, with wellness programs and, you know, implementing new employee evaluation systems and, you know, bringing those up to, you know, 21st century standards when sometimes we don't even have 20th century standards. So. Uh, I'm really excited for her to uh, to join us here. Um, she's been with Cohasset about three years. Um, I will say that Lisa is an Ashland resident, um, and so that's always a plus when we can when we can find people in Ashland who can uh, do this work. So, with that being said, I'd like to invite Lisa up and let her introduce herself to the community. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Um, it's pretty exciting for me to be here. Um, I, as I said, I've spent the past few years in Cohasset um, growing. They didn't have an HR program there when I started, so kind of grew that from scratch, developed it for what the, the town needed. Um, and uh, between that and, and previous experiences, I'm super excited to be able to take all of that knowledge and skill set and bring it to a place where it's going to impact me and my neighbors and my community, and um, it's just it's an exciting opportunity to be able to to do that and and have make a difference where I live. Well, thank you. Congratulations and welcome. Thank you. Yeah. To the uh, Ashland Town Government, I should say. You already live here, so. I do. I yeah, do. So welcome to Ashland Town Government. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, yeah, I just. If I can just sure. add, so Lisa has been involved in different committees, not appointed committees, but certainly different things. Um, she's involved in the We Love Ashland and has helped with some of the debates and things like that. Oh, right. So it's nice to see her bring her talents to town government for mm -hmm. Ashland. So right. congratulations. Yeah. Thank very you. Good. Yeah. Welcome and uh, very impressive resume. Yes. Very impressive. And, but I assume that a gas allowance was not part of your contract? <laughs> no, no, I, I could walk here. <laughs> It'd be okay. <laughs> Any other yeah. questions or thoughts? You don't, you're not requesting a 15-day waiver or anything, so we're all set? No, yeah, we're, we're all set. Lisa will start in September. Um, again, we're really just excited to have somebody of her caliber and her talents Great. here, as you all have mentioned. And, uh, um, I, can, I can tell her her boss was very, very disappointed to... Um, to uh, see her leave but I warned him a few years ago that it was going to happen at some point so you could, you could yeah. pass on those 20 other resumes that you got I, I <laughs> no he's a good he's a really good guy um, but yeah so we're looking forward to getting to work and great and I know she's going to be a, a hit looking forward to working with you. I can't wait to work with you all thank you so much thank for you. the opportunity good luck Lisa. thanks so. no I don't know
All right, so the next item on the agenda is a nuisance dog hearing. So I'll read the uh, notice of this is uh, I'll read the notice of hearing. Um, and do I need to read the entire letter? Is that uh, no oh boy? Dear Mr. Petrozelli, uh, please be advised that on August 8, 2018, at 7:15 p.m., the Ashland Board of Selectmen will conduct a hearing at the Ashland Town Hall, located at 101 Main Street, Ashland, Mass., pursuant to General Law Chapter 140, Section 157, and Section 87-16 and Section 87-17 of the Town's General Bylaws to discuss Zena and the citations that have been issued for running that large and nuisance dog. The subjects to be discussed at the hearing will include, but not be limited to, the following violation number 3384, issued on May 30th, 2018, for running at large. Violation 3385, issued on June 4th, 2018, for running at large. Second offense. Violation 3386, issued June 5th, 2018, complaint of nuisance. Violation 3389, issued June 24th, 2018, for running at large. Violation 3391 issued June 24, 2018, for failure to vaccinate. Violation 3392 issued June 24, 2018, for complaint of nuisance. The hearing will be held pursuant to provisions of General Law Chapter 140, Section 157, and Section 87 16 of the Town's General Bylaws. You may appear on your own behalf and are with an attorney and present evidence and witnesses. For your information and review, we have included copies of the violations that were provided previously provided to you by the town animal control officer. Sincerely, Michael Herbert, town manager. Okay, so this hearing has been opened, and uh, Mr. Town Manager, is there a certain protocol? Do we want to? Um, well, I mean, typically Don what Walsh happens, here, yeah. yep, typically what happens after you, you know, read the uh, notice of the hearing, um, we have our animal control officer give up and give just kind of a general description of the uh, of the charges and, and outline those um, and then at some point you I see mr. Petrozelli is here you he can ask okay. him for his um, you know his uh, the points that he would like to make um, and then see if there are any audience members who would like to um, add their points and then at that point in time you deliberate and decide on what you want to do um, in response to this, and we have included the town bylaws for nuisance animals, and uh, so that outlines what your powers are and what options that you have. Okay, thank you, uh, Ms. Walsh. Would you care to come up? And Hi, good evening, uh, Donna Walsh, Ashland Animal Control. So the most recent. Um, history that we have um, with Zena and Mr. Petrozelli um, started on May 30th, um, which for which we had an incident um, where he was, you know, at the neighbor's property again, um, and he was issued a citation for running at large. Uh, on June 4th, um, we had another incident um, and that resulted in a second offense running at large and also a complaint of nuisance. Um, same thing, he was in the neighbor's property. On June 23rd, um, again, we had a, an incident and it, um, we had several police officers there um, and an animal control officer and um, at that point, we uh, decided, or Brianna decided to um, confiscate the dog and bring it into custody because at that point, the rabies had run out for probably two weeks. Um, so she was brought in and held until the following Monday. Um, happened over a weekend. Um, she was brought in the following Monday to uh, the Westboro, I believe, uh, Animal Hospital, and um, she was vaccinated, which for which I got a copy of the certificate and made sure that everything was up to date, and at that point, we released the dog. Um, we didn't have any other reason we could hold the dog um, at that time. So again, we, we issued a running at large, uh, failure to vaccinate, 
and a complaint of nuisance. To date, from that time, we've had no other incidents or complaints. Okay, thank you, Officer Walsh. Is there, and uh, we also have uh, written recommendations from you, is that correct? Do you want to go correct. over them? Or? I can, if you'd like. Um, my recommendation um, for this particular incident is that um, we believe that the dog in question, Zena, belonging to Mr. Petrozelli, should continue to be kept only on the Petrozelli property at 94 Cordoville Road and not running loose at any time. Mr. Petrozelli should put up a secure kennel enclosure for the dog um, and will need to have the dog on a secure leash and collar system while moving the dog from the house to the enclosure. Mr. Petrozelli will need to keep the dog's rabies vaccination up to date at all times as, and licensing um, should be kept up to date. And um, he will also need to um, work out some sort of a monthly uh, payment on the, the fines that are owed that are affordable to him. And what's the total of those fines at this time? Mm. Looks like about three hundred dollars. Yeah, it's yeah. close to that. Yeah. So, um, before I bring up Mr. Petrozelli, are there any questions or discussion? With uh, go ahead. And yeah. see. So vaccinations. Uh, mm -hmm. There's more than just rabies. Only rabies is a lo is um, by law is a it must. Is any so other vaccinations mm -hmm. are are to the discretion of the dog owner. Sir. Um, if I may, you know, Mr. Chair, um, just as a reminder, and it, just in case you don't remember, this came before us, I believe, a couple years ago, maybe a year and a half. Is it that long? It, it, it's, it's, okay. It's been a while. Has it been two years or just a year? Time flies to me. Right. Like a year um, in the spring, but yeah. And the the Board of Selectmen at that time issued a determination that the dog, you know, was a nuisance dog and that it should be restrained. I believe tethered um, was the preferred method. Um, unfortunately, that has not seemed to work, and I think that's why uh, Ms. Walsh, she's recommending that there's some type of enclosure that, mm -hmm. that happens. Um, I just, you know, the question is, is what if that doesn't happen? What are the next, what are the next steps? I think that's something that the board should be considering. And also with the payment of the fines, if the board's unable, er, Mr. if Mr. Petrozelli is unable to do that, what kind of recourse would the town have? This is, kind of goes off topic a little bit, but this is a, a flaw that we've found in our non-criminal system is that we don't have the ability to collect once these things are issued. You know, it's something that we're working on. I mean, we can't collect, but if somebody does not pay, what happens? Um, what recourse do we have? So are we able to bundle a let's say a non-payment of a of a animal violation to a, an excise tax or to a, a property tax or something like that is that I, currently we can't i it, yeah i've asked that question before it's the answer is no, right, no. Well, that's something we should follow we up we have to accept a state statute mm -hmm. um it's a chapter 40u and that allows us to put it on the property owner's tax bill so that's um, something we should consider all right let's put that on the to-do list i think okay i'm I'm going to call up Mr. Petrozelli at this time. If there's an uh, officer, well, just just stay yep. here. And Mr. Petrozelli, would you care to come up and talk to us? How you doing? Good. How are you? Um, about these issues, I apologize for the inconvenience to the neighbors, but basically it boils down to one neighbor who goes under the same name as my animal. And uh, anyway, she's a, anyway, I apologize for all of the inconveniences. I've had her penned up. She seems to slip out of her leash. I mean, she's just very quick. She's faster than me. And she gets away and she likes to play tag with me. Well, anyway, um, I, I rounded her up a few times, and a few times too late, and 
people will bitch about it. One in particular, every single time. And uh, as of lately, she has been getting out. She's been a different animal ever since she's got locked up. She's an emotional wreck. Now she's got anxieties. But uh, I'm working on that. And uh, I just want to say I'm sorry for the big inconvenience and all of this that has to go through all of you guys meeting up with me and all of this. I mean, good thing I don't have silver. I mean, silver would be running right into the town hall. But anyway, um, as for the fines, I will do what I can. I just want to know who I pay for that, town hall or her or whatever, and I will give what I can when I can to resolve their toll. I mean, I mean, we can work out something with like Donna and the treasurer. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so questions I, or thoughts for Mr. Petrozelli? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this may sound um, like a, a poor attempt at, at putting a positive spin on this, but it, it looks like we're making a little progress in that the last time it was a vicious dog here, and, and now it's She's just not a, a vicious dog. She's not a vicious dog here. I don't know so, who. <laughs> um, the one who keeps calling is afraid of everything. If a sparrow lands on her well, foot of her car, she well, panics. Well, Ms. Walsh has made recommendations. Would you abide by those recommendations? Yeah, I've been made? doing fine with her. But like I said, I should have named her Houdini because she gets out of everything. I mean, she's fast. A little too fast for me. It would have been great if I had her 30, 40 years ago. I was pretty quick. Sure, go ahead. And now the knees aren't what they used to be, and I can't keep up to a, a shepherd anymore. So you're mentioning that she's slipping out of her leash. Yeah, she likes to pull it right off. Okay, so there the are... The more I tighten it, the more yep. she seems to get out of it. It's, there are other ways. You could use a harness. I was going to buy a harness. There's different ways to do that because I appreciate you apologizing, and I appreciate you know that you're upset with the neighbor for complaining, but th it bothers the neighbor. And she should throw her phone away. Well, we can't control everybody, but it's your dog, and by law, it needs to be on a leash if it's not on your property. And I would just recommend that you look at trying to get a harness so that you can control her um, between taking her from the house to your pen. I had bought That's a harness at Petco, the largest one they had, the biggest one they had, and it doesn't fit her. I got on the internet, I found one for Huskies, for the Iditarod. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, I didn't make the appointment to meet with the person to purchase this harness. It was really nice, too. And uh, she had uh, sold it to someone else. I can't find this particular type of harness anywhere. Okay. Believe but me, I, I would looked. Say, I would recommend you keep looking. Because I've been looking. If she keeps getting out of her leash, the we don't want to. Are we, too small. You don't want to be back here. I don't want to be back here talking back. to you guys. <laughs> you don't want to deal so, with me, you know. And so I don't. Say, you know, do not what personal, you can. but I don't want to deal with you guys either. All right, hold on, okay? Mr. Bignani, Do you have? I, I have a couple of things, Mr. Petrozzoli. If you don't mind. Go right ahead, man. Well, I think one of you said your dog is very nervous and and wound kind of tight. Um, no, she's not wound up tight. She's. She's afraid of people because people get her nervous, and she's very she's timid. Okay. She will hide in the corner. She's nervous. Well, if, very, if, if yeah, that's the case, does. then I, my dog is experiencing the same thing right now, and we, we gave her that they're called commies. Hmm. Chill pills. Well, yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah. And I have to tell you something. She's been on them for three weeks, and I, there's been an immediate change in her total behavior. The gummies? They're not gummies. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I know what you're talking about. All right. They, but they call commies. And maybe that may be something, Donna, to, to talk to the vet about maybe getting something for, for uh, Mr. Pitcher, Julian, Zena, so that way at well, least the it, dog will be, you know, a little more calmer than <clears throat> instead of running around and maybe you'll be able to chase after her where she's not as, as quick on those instead of uh, 
Well, I'll tell you, she's pretty mellow for the most part, but when she gets free, she wants to stretch her legs and go. Sure, okay. Yeah, and she's yeah. probably pissed off at me because I keep her bound up, you know? And when she gets the opportunity <coughs> to stretch her legs, she does. Right. And Steve? like I said, it's a game of tag. She plays mm -hmm. with me. All right, hold on, yeah. Mm -hmm. Steve? So, Mr. Petroselli, a couple things. Uh, number one, uh, you know, I, the, the, um, what I perceive as a disrespect to your neighbors that you're verbalizing here, I have, I, I have a problem with. I'm sorry. You have, a neighbor, you have a neighbor that's registered a complaint, not just here, but she's also registered in the past as well. So, you know, let's agree that we have a, we have a situation here that we need to solve. Now, the second thing I'm hearing is that you can't, you're, you're unable to manage the animal with a leash, with a tether, with a harness, with whatever. So it seems pretty clear that uh, uh, Donna's recommendation of a pen is really what we should be talking about. Would you agree? Yes. Okay. I do have a pen for her, and she's never gotten out of the pen. Okay. The times that she's gotten loose were the times that I've taken her out of the pen or putting her into the pen, from my vehicle to the pen, from the pen to the vehicle. Like I said, she's quick and she gets out. And that's the only times where she escapes. Right. So, Donna, question for you. Have you seen the pen? Have you seen the arrangement? Is it satisfactory? Is it sufficient to control? It, yeah, it's huge. Well. Donna, do you want to just come up and because this is a key point, you're saying that he should build one. He should oh, put I've up a secure one. Is that? Do you agree that the current enclosure is adequate, or? I think what I was referring to is a regular dog kennel chain link. Um, you know, okay. I, I don't. Yeah. You know, I mean, a wooden pallet, homemade pen. Um, may be holding him, maybe not. You know, I can't guarantee that that will, that will contain her. Because I think one of the things we need to consider is whether we can or should order Mr. Petrozelli to build your kind of standard dog kennel to sp yes. certain <coughs> uh, specifications. Chain link. I mean, I mean what are you calling standard? I, I have a pen now that she cannot get out of. I mean, what is standard? Well, I, I'm a jack of all trades. I can make anything. I just not got to know what I need to work with. Well, is this something? Well, Donna, if you go there and look at it, can you think if that's going to be it. adequate? And I've what's your it. opinion? Well, like I said, I can, you know, it's a homemade pen made out of wooden pallets. So I cannot guarantee that the dog's not going to get out of that. But we don't know for sure that it's gotten out of the pen. We don't he, know if it's gotten out of the pen or if it's never gotten out. Or if what he's saying is that the reason the dog gets loose is as he's moving him from the, her from one place to another. It appears every time I've been there, it's that it's gotten away from him, not necessarily out, out of, of the pen. pen. However, okay. it has been reported um, from a neighbor that it can climb a fence. So. Can it well, get out of that pen that, shepherd, that he's so. got? I, I can't guarantee yeah. that. You know, I've seen it. It looks pretty secure, but that doesn't mean that, you know. All right, thank you. I mean, what I don't want to go on my say-so sure. that, right. that no, it's no, no, secure that's no, no, that's okay. and we'll then have something advice. go. Yeah. All right, I'm just going to, I just want to ask, if there anyone else here that wants to speak on this matter? For, for, come on up. Thank you, uh, Officer Walsh. Um, Mr. Mitchell, I'd like to thank you for your comment about the disrespect that has been shown to me tonight. I truly do appreciate that. Um, to clarify a few things, oh, my name is Amy Leah Trusinski, sorry. I live at 118 Cordeville Road. Um, I have been the one, obviously, <laughs> complaining. To clarify a few things, this has been going on for 16 months, which is far too long, in my opinion. Um, I also live four houses down the street. So by neighbor, it sounds like I'm his next door neighbor. I am not. I live four houses down the street. And they're all big yards and spread out houses. 
this dog just always ends up in my yard. I don't know if he's going to other yards and people just aren't complaining or aren't noticing, but this dog is just always in my yard. I have pictures of it outside my, right on the steps outside my back porch. I have pictures of it out, right outside, like two feet outside my living room window. There's no reason whatsoever why anybody else's dog should be in my yard. None. Right. We have leash laws. I don't understand why I'm still here 16 months later dealing with this issue. It makes no difference to me if it's the nicest dog in the world, if it's the meanest dog in the world, it's in my yard. I have two dogs. I have nephews that come over all the time. We are always out in the backyard. Nothing should be in my yard except my family and my pets. And I just want to know what the town of Ashland is going to do when this happens again, because I truly believe, seeing as this has been 16 months, that this will happen again. Okay, thank you. Thoughts or uh, questions? Any for? Uh, no? All right. Well, thank you for your thank statement. You. Okay. Are we ready to discuss this? Anybody have any, any other questions for any of the principals here? All right, thoughts on, on the recommendations that Officer Walsh has made? People are in general agreement with uh, her recommendations? Mm, I'll start. So yeah, I think it's, it's clear that we need to uh, condition this with a, a what we would all agree and be comfortable with as, as a, an enclosure that will uh, certainly qualify, I think, in, in Officer Walsh's category as, as a sufficient uh, enclosure. So uh, I would recommend that we condition that. Uh, I, you know, in terms of the, the transfer of the dog from the kennel to somewhere else, whether the home or a vehicle, the, what do we do there? Training. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that um, some sort of a martingale or um, something that the dog cannot slip out of when you when you put a collar on or some sort of harness that the dog can't slip out of i don't think it that the dog really has anything on it that isn't foolproof we just need to work on that are there any harnesses that you may recommend to mr petrizzoli for his german shepherd no. that would keep the dog from getting away from him so that way when he puts the leash on, I mean, it's going to be wrapped around his arm, he'll get dragged with the dog if, if it you know, does what it's supposed to do? I mean, usually um, with a kennel dog, we'll use an easy walk harness mm -hmm. um, or a martingale collar. And in some instances, if we have a dog that's aggressive, um, we recommend the, you know, the, the easy, the harness uh, leash, the harness collar combination so that uh, you know it's it's hooked in both places mm -hmm. yes, Other kind. is could we uh, request that officer Walsh work with mr. Petroselli to establish kind of a, a new baseline here and then report back to us at our next meeting I can do that. Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead. One of the other things we've done, I remember on one of our other dog hearings was, it was a training issue, right? I mean, if your dog is trained, it is not gonna run away from you unless it sees something in particular. So can we say that he needs to do training with the dog? So, I mean, I know when I had my dog, it could be running and I could tell it to stop and yeah, it would drop. That's, that's what it should do. Yeah. And that's what any dog should do. You shouldn't have to be chasing your dog if it's, if it's well-trained. So 
I say, you know, we do something with that, and either he can do his own training, and if we see that there's no improvement in six months, then we can mandate that he go to training to be able to get control of the dog via training. If, I mean, because I think um, if he's saying that there's no harness or nothing that will keep it, then we need to mandate training. Uh, Mr. Petrozelli, do you have, do you mind coming up uh, again? Do you mind? I just wanted to ask you a question. You probably should speak into the microphone. Do you have the the resources and the ability to take on these measures? Yes, I do. Such as building a, a proper kennel or having a proper kennel installed and getting the, the proper harness and having the dog get trained? Well, everything basically boils down to uh, financial issues and just looking for the products that I need that I can't find. Um, I did, I, I went out and I bought, I spent $25 on a harness. I got a Petco. Mm -hmm. And the thing was just too small. And I maxed it out. It, it was adjustable. Okay, I maxed yeah. it out. And it was too flimsy. So basically, I uh, wasted my money. So can you find And I'm looking for better harnesses for her. Okay. For so that. I think part of what we're getting at here is we, we, we need you to take certain measures. If you don't, we have to consider other actions. So I'm trying to get a feeling if you're capable of having the dog get trained, building a kennel, having the right harness, maintaining control of the dog. Yeah, I can handle all of it. I've been handling, I've always had big dogs. Okay. And honestly, when I was growing up, I've had very big dogs. Never had a harness, okay. never so had a leash. What you've been telling us and is And never had able. them in a pen because it was a different time right. back then. Well. But now there's new bylaws well, but to your dog protect not everybody. Be loose. No one's dog really is allowed to run loose. I mean, well, like I said, years, years ago there wasn't a problem. And I didn't have a problem with my animals. But now there's bylaws, there's issues. And it's requiring me to take different actions yep. to rectify these problems. And you're problems. prepared to take those actions. I've been trying to take, I've been shopping, like I said, for a new harness. I mean, I, I know she can't get out of the pen that I, yeah. I have built, okay. and she doesn't jump over fences. So we're, we're, just so you know, we're all dog owners up at this table here. Not so me. we know, not you, not well, you should sure. be. Previous. But, uh, Still. you know, we all know I, I, all, I think all the issues. We understand I, that. I think that I should take her to school. Okay. I agree. That's a good I agree. Suggestion. Now I gotta find a school. Now again, this is more research and all of this. There are plenty I'm of schools. I'll be up for area. that because you know, uh, I'm not playing tag with a shepherd. I have a year-old pup right now. We go to school, so I would recommend you do the same. Maybe. There are plenty of schools in the area. I'm sure I can get some uh, recommendations from. Uh, yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure you yeah. can. Uh, yeah. that, you know, that's something I didn't investigate, which I know I should. I've had it in the back, on the back burner over here. I and, think it's uh, time. I, and I think it's for your safety and for your dog's safety. I mean, I just looked at a map where you live and where 118 Cordoville is. Yeah. <laughs> that's a deadly road for it, it dogs. It is. I mean, the last I, thing I've we had dogs in the past 50 years right. on, in that house. I had dogs for but, like 50 but, years. And we lost quite a few of them. Yeah, but the real issue right now is controlling your dog. Right. That's yeah, the issue. I think it's time to take so, it to school. I think right. it's time that you, you enclose the dog right. and that you control the dog from transport from the pen to wherever you're taking them, yeah. to the house, to a vehicle, whatever. So I think, you know, my recommendation would be that we ask Officer Walsh to work to achieve those conditions and report back to us. Pretty quickly, yeah. Yeah, and I would, just for Mr. Mr. Petrozelli's benefit and, and everybody else's benefit, I think it wouldn't be a bad idea to put some kind of time frame mm -hmm. associated with that. So yeah. have training completed by, you know, a certain date. So that way, Mr. Mr. Petrozelli knows, you know, what's what expected of do. him. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, All right. So he's agreed to these recommendations. As I'm, and so the board at this point is going to largely go with these recommendations, add the training one, add training. and puts a, a, a date. And we're talking about what are we thinking to build the kennel and and, and go to training. Uh, well, when's our next 60 meeting? days or well. 
25th of August? No, September, no, September. Oh, September. Right, right now, it's not for some time. September. Is that well, enough time? Is that enough time? I think it's I enough think time maybe for, for some. Maybe for a progress well, I report. I think it's yeah. for some of it, right? Yeah. I mean, it's certainly time to have Donna check the right. kennel, and if it's n if she doesn't think it's appropriate, rec you know, and the harness or and the harness leash or whatever, and at least have n knowing where you're going to start the training and do the training. So I mean, have that report at September 5th uh, meeting. Uh, yeah, in yeah, yeah we'll have an update. And, and again, who knows how long it's going to take for this training? Well, all dogs are different. Right, but at least if you we know you're going to train, you found a place and you can start training, that's a start. And you understand that you need to control the dog, and we we don't want to hear any more complaints right. about the dog being loose. So. I don't and if, either. And if you, you know, if you have trouble implementing these things, talk to Officer Walsh, and yeah. uh, and we'll we'll hear from you at the next meeting. Then, do we need to uh, do we need a motion on these uh, recommendations? Okay, who wants yeah. to put them together? Then, I move that we accept the recommendations and add a training requirement um, and get an update by our next meeting in September. That second. Second. The motion's been made and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Hearing none. Uh, motion carry. Motion's passed unanimously. All right. Thank you, Mr. Petrozelli, and thank you. Thank you, Donna. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Donna. Do you have one other thing you want to say? I do. I would like to know. Well, you, want, you need to come up. What's wrong? I'm so. That's great that there's a plan in action now. Yeah. What happens when the dog ends up back in my yard? What's the next step after that? You have to let us know. I mean, I you know, we'll it's we'll call just call the yeah. complaint. <laughs> Funny story about calling the police. I called the police last year and they told me it wasn't their problem. Okay. It wasn't until June yeah. when the dog was in my yard for continue, back and yeah. forth for three hours that I finally called the police, had enough, lost my temper with them, and then they finally showed up. Is that the proper, I'm sorry, is that the proper, should she call animal control or the police? Call, call the police and they would oh, dispatch they should animal dispatch control. control. Right. If you. And I had, that night I had contacted Donna Walsh. I was told that my complaint would be forwarded to the animal control officer that was on duty. On, on duty. Yeah. The next morning the animal control officer that was on duty came to my house to speak to me and was told that when she was called in by the Ashland Police Department, that was the first she had heard of this. So there's a disconnect somewhere in the town between animal control, between the police, between the town. Ooh. I don't know what to do at this point. So I, want, I would like to know if this dog ends up back in my yard, are the police going to respond to me? I know you guys can't tell me that, but I've been told Well, document it's not your their complaints and, and we'll I follow do. I up. Have all, I have all of well, my phone records. I, think I have Donna pictures Walsh, all in my she's phone. She's listed them all. She's listed a yeah. number of complaints. So Sounds like don't talk, please don't talk to her, what Mr. Petrozelli. What are you Petrozelli. going to do about it? Guys, it's been let's, 16 let's not have months. a dialogue here. So just just uh, so communicate been, through I mean, me. This is this has been going on long enough. No, I have never complained about anything else in the town of Ashland. I have a neighbor that burns trees and branches and grass and everything, and the smoke blows directly into my house. I shut my windows because it's on his property. Wow. I have another dog that all the way in the back of my property who barks non-stop all night all right. i've never complained about it because it's on his property and i don't care. so i think there's a lot of this support for quality of life issues and you'll find people being sympathetic and willing to take action i think my advice to you is is to continue filing these complaints and document it if if you don't feel they're prop being properly responded to to communicate to the town manager and the board of selectmen about uh, what you feel is is happening okay thank you Hopefully, I don't have to anymore. Yeah, hopefully. hopefully. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Thank you. So, so I, th I think I need to close the hearing, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Did I? Yeah. yeah. And then. Um, Motion to close the hearing. Second. Oh, all those in favor of aye. closing the hearing say aye. 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 Uh, motion uh, carries unanimously. The hearing's closed. Did we, fi did we pass we the did. other motion? Okay, mm -hmm. so yeah. I think we're done. Okay. Yes. Yep, we're done. All right, thank you all. Thanks, Donna. Thank you, Donna. Thank you. Okay, so, all right, now we're on the uh, consent agenda. Does anyone want to take any of the items off the consent agenda? Nope. Okay, 
we'll, we'll just wait for a second. I, I do want to mention that there's a very large um, donation uh, from the estate of Robert Shaysky. Mm -hmm. That was uh, just like the note and thank, thank them for the genero him for generosity to the town. For the yep, yeah, so specifically for the library. Oh, yeah, very good. nice. Yeah, very nice. And I, I just because do we write thank you letters to I people? Was, I was just th thinking about that. Yeah. That that you know we should probably have something set up to where mm -hmm. you know, we can draft those up. So, so he was like, yeah, I'm going <laughs> to draft. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what's funny is the um, fire department does for the ambulance fund, and they do send out donations to each and every. So I don't know. You guys can discuss whether or not the library does it or we do it. I think, I think twice could be uh, yeah, would be one twice as nice. Yeah, one from the library and one from us because yeah. we're that accepting it. From an estate, so you'd have to send it to the trustee. Right. The right. Yeah. yeah the but I think an acknowledgement, sure. because I know you do. Them, I know you course. do acknowledge them, and you, you know, yeah. I think that's a little more formal and something that. Yeah, I know. Does Antoinette Pucci? Um, yeah. Yeah. And uh, the Greater Ashland Lions. So that was nice. Mm. Do all that. Okay, motion to approve a consent agenda as presented. Second. Second. All those in favor of approving the consent agenda, say aye. 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 Opposed? And the motion carries unanimously, 5-0. Thank you. Okay, Thank you. request the Ashton Lions Club to change the toll road to the Saturday, October 13th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. with the rain. That's part of the, the agenda. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you for <laughs> catching okay. that because I don't want to do Old that over business. again. Old new business. Old new business. Old new. All right. We're Here moving we on. <laughs> so this is the vote to accept the restrictive covenant for 11 Franklin Road, <laughs> which includes 15.36 acres as authorized pursuant to Article 11 of the May 2nd, 2018 annual town meeting. We have a copy of that. Covenant, I believe, in our package. Yep. Mm -hmm. Ta Michael, yep. do you want, want to say anything about that? Or sure, just to remind folks that this is the covenant that the town um, entered into with um, the Ein and Hicks family. Uh, they've graciously, uh, essentially, uh, granted or limited development on their property um, as part of the whole Valentine Estate process and the purchasing of the Valentine Estate. So I uh, want to thank them for their generosity. Um, and I think this is uh, a great example of what can happen when you get different parties together working for one goal uh, for the betterment of the town. And I know Carl really, you know, did a lot of work on this as well. I don't know if you have something that you want to add. And no, I, I, I just... Uh, would like to thank them as well. It, it was a long process. Uh, the whole issue uh, was a long process, and this whole process that involved the Board of Selectmen uh, was about nine months of uh, ongoing discussion. It was a complicated situation, um, and uh, we went through this at town meeting. It had, it had a lot of moving parts that had to all come together. Uh, and this was uh, one that was really very key to it. And, and so I would also like to extend my thanks mm -hmm. uh, to the family uh, for their generosity. Yeah, and, um, and just <laughs> glad that, that uh, it's finally come to fruition. Great. All right. Thank you. So um, we need ready to have a vote to accept it. So ready, ready to with motion. The motion. Okay. Ready? Very good. Go yeah. ahead. I hereby move that the Board of Selectmen accept, accept a restrictive covenant in the form attached and presented at this meeting for the land known as and numbered 11 Franklin Road, Ashland, Middlesex County, Commonwealth of Massachusetts, which is a portion of the land conveyed by deed recorded with the Middlesex South District Registry of Deeds in Book 31815, page 349, and dated August 23, 2000 and by a reservation of rights in a deed recorded with said registry at book 32836, page 553, and dated April 26, 2001, and meaning and intending to include the land showed as lot one on a plan entitled Plan of Land in Ashland, dated December 7, 2000, by GLM Engineering Consultants, Inc., 1750 Washington Street, Holliston, Mass., and recorded as plan number 428 of 2001 in plan book 32836, plan 553, consisting of two sheets, including 15.36 acres 
as authorized pursuant to Article 11 of the May 2nd, 2018 Annual Town Meeting, and further to authorize the Chair, Robert Chair, to execute and enter into any and all documents necessary to effectuate the restrictive covenant. Second. A second. <coughs> Motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay. Oh, stars. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. <laughs> Not for this. Not for this one. Okay, Robin go ahead. Hicks, 11 Franklin sure. Road. Robin. I'd like to thank all the selectmen, especially Kyle and Mike. You're not a selectman, but you're pretty close to him. He's the boss. Um, <laughs> and the, the, the town's people of Ashland. Uh, we couldn't have done this without every, everyone's support. We, we really right. thank everyone. And thank you thank for you your for doing flexibility. Yep. We appreciate it's it. It's very good. It's a good team effort, I think. So. Okay, thank you. That's, and the a next that's a townie helping the townies. Hmm. Thunder's and the thunder's coming, I know. They're celebrating up there. <laughs> <laughs> They're celebrating up there. Think of it that way. <laughs> All right, the next uh, item is 133 West Union. Vote to purchase the land known as 125-133 West Union Street, including land shown as parcel A, lot one, lot two, and lot three, including 7.67 acres, plus or minus, for $3.5 million. Right. What's this about? <laughs> so it's just. Wait, didn't we do this already? No, no. You voted to enter into a purchase and sale. Okay. Town meeting voted to authorize you to enter into a purchase and sale and purchase the land. Um, this is actual. You know, the actual vote to purchase the property. The closing will be set for Monday, the thirteenth, mm -hmm. at Ooh. ten a.m. Um, I believe. Um, oh, that's thunder. I forgot the quiet zone. Um, I don't know, Rob, if you're going to be available. Uh, uh, what time was sorry, that? Sorry, when, um, when is the closer? Monday, this coming Monday, okay. and I believe 10. Um, it be here, so I won't. It'll be here at the office. Um, no, I, w I won't be That's available. True. So at that point, you would authorize another Board of Selectmen to sign. Volunteers yeah. here. I'm around. But you or have Steve's you available. Have a chair, you have Steve? a chair that's to be the vice, vice chair. chair. Are you available, Mr. Vice Chair? I believe I am. Mm. All right. So, what do we need to do to authorize it? Um, I'll be in the motion. Okay. Ready? I move that we approve the purchase of land known as 125 through 133 West Union Street, including land shown as parcel A, lot one, lot two, and lot three including 7.76 acres plus or minus for three million five hundred thousand dollars and i authorize that steve mitchell step in to sign the purchase and sale the the the, the purchase and sale is it a purchase the, the, the purchase no the purchase the closing document the closing documents the closing thank you doc to execute the closing. to execute the closing. second for that second all right motion has been made and seconded all in favor say aye aye aye, aye. opposed Motion carries five on my calendar, huh? Okay. Yeah. Yes. So there's several sets of documents that... Oh. Yes. Um, so there are several sets of documents that uh, the board will need to sign tonight. Okay. Um, then there's the documents on Monday. I will get uh, an executed copy of the restrictive covenant to you as well. Very good. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Drive carefully going home. Is it no kidding? Is it right? Yeah. It oh, sounded. Know you get on, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's thunderstorm warnings and flash flood warnings yeah, going was on it? right now. Yeah, yeah was that, that was Donna's? lightning just now. That was Donna's. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, we're in a All right. The next agenda item is open the warrant for the special town meeting on November 28, 2018. Okay. Mr. Town Manager? Sure. Um, I'm actually going to uh, turn this over to our assistant town manager, as she's the one who put all of this together. Okay. So we're just asking for the warrant to be yeah, to, anywhere. <laughs> uh, to be opened um, today or tomorrow. Um, we're looking at the special town meeting to be November 28th. Um, we've checked with the moderator that works with the schedule. <clears throat> this would allow us um, to open a period for people to submit notices of intent uh, through the 19th of September, and then there'll be the due diligence period. And then hopefully we'll be able to vote um, to close the impose the warrant on October 24th, which is 
a little bit ambitious, but it allows us to post it a full month before town meeting. Okay, thank you. Anything else? So, so any other discussion or thoughts on this? I do just want to bring up one point. We will have a vote on the town meeting warrant uh, that will require a debt exclusion that we will have had, hopefully successfully, um, earlier in November. So Are just we able to put that on the state election? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, good. And that, of course, you're talking about the public safety building. Talking about the public safety building, yes. Okay, very good. All right, so we need a vote to open the warrant. I move that we open the warrant for the special town meeting with the dates as presented. Second. All those motions have made and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And motion passes 5-0. Okay. So I'm going to, uh, next one is discuss and sign warrant for the state primary. And, and uh, can we take these two together, the typo on the ballot question, or those separate? Um, I think you can. Yeah, yeah I mean, the do that. typographical error, the correction has been printed in, in your documents. So if you feel comfortable doing that. Okay, any discussion, questions about? So, Michael, just uh, just a brief description of what what we're correcting here. Um, it was just one of the d general law references okay. that was part of it. And this is uh, the ballot question just for folks watching is to pay for the bonds issued to pay uh, for project manager engineering design services related to construction of a public safety building. Right. All right, and that's the, basically the debt exclusion question. Correct. Okay. Any other discussion or questions? Are we ready for a motion on this? Yep. I move that the board affirm the correction of the typogra typographical error in the ballot question um, as, I think, yeah. as reviewed by Rob. And also, we're also signing the warrant for the state primary. Yeah, we don't have to vote anything for that, and we're do not we? Voting on we it. just okay. sign it. Yep. All right, so right? that's the motion. Okay, right. Do we have a second for the motion? Second. Motion's been made and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. None. Motion passes 5 nothing. And we will sign the warrant for the primary. You're going to pass Correct. that around? We'll pass okay. that around tonight. Okay. Very good. All right. Yeah, that's it. Nice to met. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Next time is a vote to renew district agreement for the Metro West Veterans Services District. Um, Town manager? Um, yes, sir. So just by way of background, um, for the audience and for those of you that may not know here, um, we are actually part of a veteran service district. It's one of the first regional veteran service districts in the state. Uh, we partner with the towns of Hopkinton, Holliston, and Medway uh, to provide veteran service agent services to the veterans living in those towns. Um, that's, uh, that body is governed by a four member board. Um, right now, the town managers and town administrators of, uh, of each of those towns. Um, and we meet generally to, you know, set policy and look at the budget and, um, you know, get an update as to the status of our veterans and, you know, any special cases that might uh, come up for attention. Uh, but uh, to do that, it's the Board of Selectmen that are actually, um, they actually enter into this agreement. And so we just need to, it's time to be renewed and so that is what uh, what we're asking for here if you'll see under the um, FY 2019 amendment to agreement uh, by and among the towns um, it lists specifically what the uh, changes in the agreement would be um, after the words uh, office it was located in Ashland Town Hall um, right now we'd be replacing it with as determined by the Board of Directors it's currently in the town of Holliston um, Paragraph 11, first line after the word on, on, strike out an annual and replace with biannual. Um, and then replace the district of budget as an attachment B. Um, and that budget shows a FY19 budget of $121,606. And that's, again, for the entire district. So, um, we are fortunate we have a very good veterans agent right now. We really do. Um, and she actually has been able to bring on a part-timer who's been able to help. Um, so, so there's more outreach? There's more outreach. Um, there's more 
proactive services bring up being offered as well. I think that's important. So yeah, I would just ask that you authorize the amendment to the agreement. Any further discussion? Ready to make a motion? Mm -hmm. I move that we approve the amendment to the, the, fiscal, the fiscal year 2019 amendment to the agreement by and between the towns of Ashland, Hollis, and Hopkinton and Medway for our Veterans District and a portion apportionment of expenses. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Okay. Motion passes 5-0. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next one is a review and vote to reappoint committee members whose terms are set to expire August 31st, 2018. So, so if I understand this, we've just, we've, we've, been, we've give, been given a list of all of the uh, committee members, it's quite a long list, um, whose terms expire uh, on August 31st, and they're listed here to be renewed for different terms. Some are one year, some are three years, um, some are two years. Is this, um, is this basically all the committee members? I'm just I'm trying to remember. Is there other, are there people that don't expire on August 31st? or? Yeah, there's some, yeah, there's some committees that aren't expired okay. So these yet are the people that yeah. are up this year. Okay. Yeah. So any question, questions about the list or the process? Yes. Yeah, in reviewing the list, uh, one suggestion I have is the Warren Woods Ad Hoc Committee is that we uh, I'm recommending that we dissolve that tonight. Uh, it hasn't met. Uh, it fulfilled its mission. It hasn't met for a couple of years. So it's really uh, a not a necessary committee to even put on a list. Okay. Any other thoughts on that? Anybody question that? So do we need a motion to um, um, discontinue this committee? Yeah, well, Steve is on that committee. Uh, also, I believe uh, Michael had some correspondence from Eddie Hart was also on the committee, uh, and I think they were in agreement. Yeah, he's supportive of it. Of dissolving it? That, yeah. 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 So I would so make a motion then to dissolve the Warren Woods Ad, ad Hoc Committee. Second. All those in favor of dissolving the Warren Woods Ad Hoc Committee say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, motion carries 5-0. So the Warren Woods Ad Hoc Committee is dissolved. Okay. All right. Any other comments uh, on this? Any other questions we have yeah, any corrections just, uh, or, sure this is kind of a formality but I'm assuming Susan that everybody's been notified and they want to be reappointed that's, that's that is correct yeah. okay thank you well, thank you for all that anyone work anyone that didn't want to has been removed from the list that's presented okay. you able to find these I mean reach out to them pretty easily through the emails and things like that or? it's been a work but yes I, I have a pretty good email base now good and just to remind the people that are being reappointed that they have to uh, be re-sworn in. Yep. Correct. Very good. At, um, at the end of the month. And also, of course, thank all these folks for their participation, being willing to, um, to continue their service. So that's great. Now, in terms of do we need to go through this list? Or what do we? You can just move the list. I okay. did put it in the minutes. Very good. Yeah. I have a motion to... Um, Move the list so forward. So moved. Second. Move the list uh, as amended. As amended. As amended. Yeah, that's go. very good. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Okay. Motion Thanks to passed. all who are willing yeah. to serve again. Yeah. Very good. Question, Thank Susan. Uh, a master list of openings on committees? Oh, that's a good question. That's part of what I was working on. In that's our next meeting. This. Okay, so that's <laughs> fine. So we yeah. do have it. Okay. Um, and is this something we, we, we would post on the website, you know, op committee openings? And I know Jim Zabrowski is here, who's the chair of the Council on Aging, and they have an opening at this point as well that uh, they're looking to fill. And uh, so just folks that are out there listening, there is an opening on the Council on Aging. And I, um, correct me if I'm wrong, I thought you had a couple of potentials or maybe? Um, we have one potential at the moment. Okay. So they're still putting out the call for, for potential. Uh, I did give them, um, what, a half dozen talent bank forms that they're taking to an event or something that they have coming up. So they, they have those documents. But additionally, um, 
on our website right now. We have a volunteer opportunity. I'm working with IT that when the list is all compiled of the vacancies, we're going to try to create a link that has the list and also has the talent bank form. And I think we're going to pull out all of the um, seats that are on there because people tend to fill out talent bank forms for seats for committees that are completely full. And I would rather have them sure. select vacancies. Right. A vacancy so, list. Good. Okay. Yeah. Good. so you're working towards having a posted vacancy list. We are. We're list. just not there yet. So I'm kind of putting the car before the horse. But so if we could have that works. by our September meeting, and then we can certainly promote it in different ways sure. between okay. our website and other places. If, right. if, if you think that's doable. Cool. I'll have to see. Or maybe we'll do an update. <laughs> well, let us know. Okay. I'll keep you updated. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, next, we'll appoint members to the Public Safety Building Committee. <laughs> did Correct. we have? Yeah. Oh, um, we did have we one member selectmen. who applied, um, with Peter Chisholm. And at your last meeting, you appointed... Joe, Joe and Steve. or you said that you were going to appoint Joe and Steve to that. Um, we did. Building did, did, Brett so did. Yeah. did Brett apply? Did not receive one, no. Oh. I did not. So um, at this point, I would ask that you appoint uh, Jen, Chief Davis, Chief Roby, uh, Peter Chisholm, um, and myself to the committee. Um, we still have room for one more, one more citizen. So we'll if anybody's interested. There, yeah. Um, and then we also have Paul Carpenter and Joe as uh, Joe Richardson as ex officio. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. So, um, so you are you asking to uh, appoint Peter tonight as well? Yes, please. Might as well. No, okay. I think so. Unless any discussion on the appointment. No, so really, he, it's just. I think one. he would be good. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, you kind of read a list. Is that? Sufficient? Do we need another motion uh, listing everyone who are appointing here tonight? I can do that. Yeah. So, move that we appoint uh, Michael Herbert, Jen Ball, Chief Craig Davis, Chief Keith Roby, uh, Peter, and Peter Chisholm, Citizen Peter Chisholm, to the Public Safety Building Committee. And Paul Carpenter and, and Joe to Richardson. Point ex Joe Carpenter and uh, Joe. Uh, Paul sorry, Carpenter. Paul Carpenter yeah. and Joe Richardson as ex officio members. Very good. All right. Second. Mo motion is made and second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Uh, motion carries five nothing. Five zero. Thank you and thank you for uh, Peter to stepping forward and other folks who got one opening left. So that'd be great to put in your talent bank form. All right, the next item is the committee handbook, which we were sent out the latest revision. Jen, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Oh, I can. And also, is part of this is also the code of conduct as well, right? That's correct. Yeah. So, um, Tara Ward and Cindy Livingston in our um, and our clerk's office have been working on this. Um, they submitted you. I think you've review, reviewed several drafts over the last year. The primary change in this draft from uh, the previous drafts were really um, in the areas that needed to align with the new charter. So really the only changes that were made here um, included following the outline provision for appointments, which are now in the charter, and also removal uh, processes. And so we just made sure that the language that will be in the handbook directly aligns with the now um, adopted new charter. Um, and the only other piece is, rather than having the code of conduct sort of built into the document, we'll have it as a standalone policy. I renamed that first section rather than confusing people with right. the code of conduct and then having a standalone policy. It's renamed um, responsibilities and requirements because it really just lays out mm -hmm. the requirements of sitting on a committee and then also some expectations and the responsibility that people are taking on. Um, and they will sign the, the final sheet of the handbook that basically says that they reviewed s section one and that they understand it and that they reviewed the code of conduct policy and they understand that as well. And um, I did, we, the code of conduct, you didn't, it's not, not in, in this, in the, in the new packet, right? It's no, it was part in the of the original. Initial, right, yeah. it was in the initial. So we're being asked to approve two documents here tonight, the revised committee handbook and the code of conduct. Do people have questions, discussion items? And you're hoping to have that approved tonight, right? 
yes. in order to give um, out to people. Right. So as folks come in to get resworn in, we'll able to give them the new handbook and post it on our website. I didn't have people have questions or thoughts about the summary of it or what's in the, the content of it? Where's yep. my No, good work, Jen. Yeah, thank you for doing that. Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. I did have one I did have one question about the um, one item I saw in the code of conduct um, I'm bringing it up here, you have it here? Um, it's coming it's kind of loading slowly but um, go out on a mess. Uh, one of the things I thought was and uh, people think of it is um, the um, I think the, you know, and actually maybe it was in a different section that there was something about um, having to support the actions of the committee that you're on. Was that something that, um, whether you w were in favor of it or not, is that, um, am I misremember? is that in a different section? Remember that one? If you guys saw that one, does that ring a bell? Like one of the one of the requirements was to support the actions of a committee, whether you agreed with those actions or not. Which I thought was m maybe overstepping a bit in terms of telling people, telling officials how to. Uh, but actually, I'm not seeing that here now. Was that in an old policy or a different section of the handbook? That doesn't ring a bell with anybody. No, not no. the way you're describing it. No. I thought there was one that was, but you know. I mean, there's okay. a section that says you should, once a decision's made. You That's the one I'm thinking about. Yeah, where's that? Is that? So page six, the second bullet, um, under B1. Yeah, okay. And this is actually the the old section actually now it's not the new one or is this this no, is this will be the new, yeah so this is still the expectations mm -hmm. yeah so I guess I'm just in a, I'd be interested to hear what other people think of that the, the, the actual quote is, realize that the member is one of a team and should abide by and assist in carrying out all decisions of the committee once a decision is made by the board commission or committee so what does that mean? So, so for example, if we have a, a matter which we have a, uh, you vote against, and so do you guys see any issues with that? Like later, your public pronouncements on that vote, um, and maybe the majority voted a certain way. Does this put any restrictions on you as a public official in making your position known? to speaking out on issues. I guess that's... I think it's meant to say that you wouldn't undermine the decision of, of a board. The majority rules. Right. right. I think that's what it's saying. Okay. I don't so I just kind of, that just kind of struck me. I, I just didn't want to be overly restricted. Yeah, I didn't take that to, to suggest in any way that uh, it would restrict any of us from articulating the way we feel the about anything, we, exactly. even though it, uh, the vote didn't go the way we voted exactly. right but you can't do anything to then negate or to negate it right which we couldn't or affect and it's, the vote. you know there's you know. very you know the things that we vote on i think it would be uh you know virtually impossible for one member to undermine uh, yeah that's the okay i would think but you know you never know, you never know. Right. you're right okay well that's uh, i just wanted to kind of clarify that a yeah. bit okay but yeah Good work by Jen. Yeah, yeah yes, thank, thank you, you for putting this all together. So yeah. and Cindy, yeah. So we've got a new, we've got a code of conduct, and all, all as people are getting reappointed, they'll be asked to review that and sign it, and also the committee handbook has been reissued and updated. Okay. Can we so offer we them? Need to vote to approve the. Yeah, we just right? wrote yeah. one question yeah. with yeah. this. Rather than automatically handing it to them via paper, can we ask them if they'd like to get it electronically, mm -hmm. so we're not just. Handing out extra yeah. paper. Well, the electronic so, uh, version is preferable because it has the links to the state stuff as right, well. Right, right, right. So. right. And do, just to clarify, is is are we all signing it 
whether or not our term is up or just when the term is up that this happens? How's it, what's the logistics? So ideally on? we'd like to have, so ideally we'd like to have, now that we've updated and it's been such a long time, that we'd have everybody um, cycle the through code. and sign it, but we'll start with the reappointments sure, because we'll, they'll sort of be, a, okay. we'll have an audience. All right, <coughs> so. And, Mr. Chair, just one sure. quick, I'm sorry for your interrupt, but on the, uh, the second document, which is Code of Conduct, Town of Ashland, Board of Selectmen, and other officials. Those other officials are either elected and or appointed? Correct. So we had talked about trying to extend that to, to everybody. That's why I'm keeping it as a separate document. No, no, no. I understand that. It just, I just maybe add those two words to the title. Okay. That's all. Just so that way people know that so for everybody, I'm not just, oh, I'm appointed. I'm not. I don't have to follow these. Uh, where are you seeing that, Joe's, that you're asking? No, the right on the very top of the page of this is Code of Conduct, Town of Ashland, Board of Selectmen, and other officials. Yes, but in it, under applicability, it says who it's applicable for, and anyone we appoint or anyone who's elected. Some people may not read that by now. Ah. I'm just, I'm just thinking of the individual that scans it real quick and stuff. That yeah, should we should we just add that, Jen? Is that an issue or? We'd, we'd, I'm just saying that sometimes yeah. people don't read it all the way down. Oh, that doesn't relate to me, so I'm not going to read yeah. it. That's okay. all. Yeah, no, that sounds good. But the other thing is, I see the forward is signed by me, and um, I'm just wondering if it should just list all the board of selectmen there, because <coughs> it's not like I did this by myself, so. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't want to actually say that. <laughs> What's you this? Beat me to I'm, reading, Carl. I'm, reading, I'm reading through this and said, "Well, this is a lovely piece of work." Oh, I did it. Great. That's good. Very good. So I would just you could I would just list the whole board there, or no one, and just say board of selectmen. <laughs> yeah. Well, because that way it could applies your name to whoever. Posterity. That's true. So that's Why? just for people's consideration. Okay. All right. I move that we accept and approve the revised committee handbook as presented, as well as the updated code of conduct with the adjustments presented tonight. Second. Oh, motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries 5 0. And we have a revised handbook and code of conduct. Thank you. Okay. Ooh, okay, the next one is discussion and vote on the 2019 sewer rates. Okay, so um, we, we received a memo in, our, uh, in, the, in the agenda materials, and also I think, Michael, you just handed out a spreadsheet. So, right. Uh, if you want to make a presentation on that. Um, yeah, so the memo I think was fairly um, explanatory. We... Um, we're going to be, or what we are requesting, is a 5.5% uh, sewer rate increase. Um, this is not something that uh, we want to do, uh, but we need to ask for. Um, and I think the memo laid out why, but just to recap um, and summarize, uh, first of all, the assessment to the town of, or city of Framingham, I should say, uh, went up significantly. Um, it had gone up somewhere around 170000 Brittany had, and we were actually looking at a 7% increase. Uh, Brittany did some work, some of her magic, and uh, reconciled some things early and was able to bring down that increase to 110,962. Um, we're also seeing um, revenue not approach uh, what we had budgeted, um, especially the new growth shortfall, which is $42,000, and the non user fee shortfall. So that's you know, one-time hookups and things of that nature. So we're starting to see the effects of slowing down on the building and stuff, which, um, again, I don't think it's a bad thing. I just think we need to be conscious of that when we're budgeting and, and thinking about that. And then finally, one of the things that uh, this increase would help cover is a new, in updating a report, um, to look at options for our sewer system. Uh, Currently, what we do is we, for our sewers, those who are on septic, um, it gets pumped and we utilize the uh, city of Framingham's pipes for which we pay a charge. That's that assessment. 
um, which is well over a million dollars now. And then it gets treated at Deer Island by the MWRA, and that's over $2 million. So 60% um, of our sewer budget is actually spent towards transporting and treating our sewage. Um, what the sewer study report would look at would be two, um, two options um, aside from keeping things as is. First would be the wastewater treatment facility um, and citing that. And of course, you know, we've talked about the possibility of doing that at, at the aggregate plant. But then another option that uh, Doug has brought to our attention is potentially a direct connection to the MWRA in the city of Framingham. So we wouldn't need to be using their pipes. We'd be directly connected to them. And so um, there's a couple of routes that could be uh, potentially utilized. So this study would look at that. So it would look at the costs of, um, you know, implementing a wastewater treatment facility. It would look at the costs of, you know, running a direct connection to the MWRA. Um, and look at what we're paying now and see, you know, basically do an alternatives analysis for those, uh, for those options. So unfortunately, unfortunately, that's the situation that we're in right now. Um, I've provided a forecast for you that Brittany has put together, which shows you that we would probably need to look at another rate increase um, in a, not next year, but the following year, and potentially um, more moving forward. Um, and that's not even really doing all the capital work that we need to do as well. So, you know, I, there's just no other way to sugarcoat it. I'm the first one to tell you when I think our tax bills or any other bills or, or fees are reasonable, but our sewer bills are high. But partially, that's because of the city of Framingham charge. And I think doing this study would be an important uh, step towards freeing us of those bonds, if you will. Mr. Sure, go ahead. I mean, sure. I, has, has our mindset changed? Because I know a few years ago, uh, we were we were all hot and bothered about you know, buying the, the, school, the Girl Scout property because we wanted to put a, a, a wastewater treatment facility there, so th which would serve two purposes. One, eliminate some of the expense that we were paying Framingham and use the bond money that we were going to pay Framingham for uh, sewage to pay for the bond for this new facility. And it would also keep the water from our aquifers in the same area instead of going out to Deer Island where it was gone and lost forever. So have we ch have we changed our thought process with respect to that? Because I'm, a, I'm I, I hope we haven't, but if we have, I, you know, we're just gonna keep, sp you know, we're flushing money down the toilet all the time, sure. excuse the pun, but we are, you know, and we're not getting anything in return. We really aren't. So I understand the $20,000, but $20,000, we know what we need. And, and I think our priority is getting that wastewater treatment facility up and running. Um, if, we, if we're going to spend that $20,000, I'd like to go for, you know, pay for some of the cost of engineering this design. This is the estimated cost yeah. of right. the study. Right. But, and again, I'm not trying to oh, you know, pull the, the, the rug from underneath here, Michael, but I just, for whatever reason, I just... Well, that land was a good investment regardless of what we well, do. Well, yeah, but, you know, I mean, we've had a few years and, you know, we've, we've had other big things that we've had to do. Sure. And, you know, our infrastructure is such that we need to, you know, we need to work on that and we need to get it done. That, that was something that was part of our vision and mission statement when we first put that document together. But um, if, if I'm not mistaken, the Girl Scout camp component was for the leaching field, not for the, the treatment center itself. And we would still need to purchase land from aggregate or somehow get land from aggregate right. that's um, contiguous to the leaching field in order to make right. that happen. So we would have to do that step first. Well, we haven't we haven't approached aggregate with respect to that because we've had other things that, we were, that we've been following up on. Unless we have, and we just haven't been happy. No, I mean, we, We've got a dialogue with them. They have to send, you know, some correspondence every mm -hmm. year, but we haven't had substantive okay. discussions okay. about that. Sure. Go ahead, Steve. I'm so sorry. a couple of questions, Michael. Um, you mentioned that initially the the overage from from Framingham was 170. Brittany, 
some mechanism got it down to 110. Mm -hmm. What kind of confidence do we have in the numbers from Framingham, and how do we then maybe, uh, you know, provide some sort of audit that ensures that we're getting a legitimate bill that's that's real. And then the second thing is uh, you handed out a sheet, the uh, Enterprise Fund uh, balance sheet, and uh, you know it looks like this is a two-year increase, and then after that we're, we're in the red for the next three years. So mm -hmm. you know, we, we're, we're looking at, I mean, f full disclosure to the community here, we're looking at uh, another increase in, in a couple of years. Yeah, I think I think I mentioned that that we're I'm sorry. Um, this is with the car the proposed increase. That's with the proposed increase, but no future increase in the next five years. So that's why you're showing red in years three through five. Um, so to answer your question, Steve, um, with the financial piece, um, Brittany would have caught that at the end of the year. Typically, what she does is in. Sharon did it before hers. You wait till the end of the year, you reconcile everything. That's when you start seeing your credits um, go. Um, your credits go to your bill. What this allowed us, I mean, she did this early. She just decided to do the first quarter early because this was coming up, and so that's what she was able to do. Um, so I've got no problem saying that that would have been found either at the end of the year or when we decide to reconcile. In terms of the actual, you know, being able to, to monitor the flow and everything like that, it's a good question. I think it's something that we have to go back through the document and see exactly what kind of tools and resources are available to us to help monitor our usage. Um, because what we were seeing, and one of the things that bothered us, is that the, the flow rate on the sewage was higher than what the water usage was so you know and we've done a pretty significant I and I inflow and infiltration program to keep un, um, unused water from getting into the sewage uh, sewage system so that's something that we have to look into as well so um, how, many, how many locations are, how many pipes are going from Ashland into Framingham? is it one or is it two it's two okay and I would assume that we have monitoring machines or some sort of measuring device on the ends of these lines at the, at the very end of the line, at the town line, so that way we should have somewhat of a figure as to where these, where these figures are. Yeah. So would it be fair to say that maybe we need to re-examine those to make sure that they're running properly and we're getting a proper a read of the, uh, the flow? And, and if we're not, then maybe we need to look into changing those. Okay, well, we, repaired. we I believe they just replaced one okay. um, not too long ago. Um, I, you know, I think that's certainly an interim step. That's something that we could look at. But, you know, ultimately, so many factors are out of our hands with the current arrangement, especially as it relates to Framingham. So, I mean, we're basically paying a percentage of their budget based right. on what the flow is. So if their budget goes up, if they decide, and this is what's happened, they've decided to make large investments in their infrastructure okay. and, their, and their sewer infrastructure. So the bills in, Fram in Framingham are going up a lot higher. But ours go, our bill, because it's a percentage of what their budget is, goes up higher as well. So. As long as we're on this system, it's yeah. Hmm. Yeah, a lot of hands. To Joseph's original point, I, I guess I'd like to hear what the, what the other members and the town manager answer is to that. I mean, is that is that something that's realistic for us to do? Or are we still interested in doing that? Our, our own treatment Connecting. plant? Oh. No, our own treatment oh. plant. Um, for economic reasons uh, and or environmental reasons. Well, it also sounds like Doug's idea is a, at least a good short term if it's, or maybe not, it's maybe it's not short term, but you know, something we should look at. Well, we should be able to figure out, I think, fairly easily what the, uh, what, if we had a direct feed to the MWRA, what our cost would be just for the flow. Construction, that's, you know, that's a whole different animal. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you say that there's several routes through Framingham. I'm sure that's a very, very expensive proposition. Um, 
but you know, it seems to me if we're if we're truly going to be masters of our own domain, it would be through a wastewater treatment plant, right? That's would seem and that, the right. And, and I'm yeah. sorry, so that, and that's why I mentioned it because I, I and I know Doug's idea. Doug talked to me about it because he knows that I was thought about getting you know this wastewater treatment plant in. But I'm saying, myself, all the monies that we we're going to put into the Doug's idea, we could put towards either purchasing the aggregate, some aggregate property, and then building the facility, and keeping our money within. And now we now we control our own destiny. We're not at the whim of somebody else's. Is that what Michael's plan is? Is to 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 do this feasibility thing and compare both of them? And, and well, it was going to be an alternatives analysis. I yeah, think, obviously, in a perfect world we would want to have our own wastewater treatment facility, but we would have to make sure that we could site it accordingly because at the aggregate site, it's not going to recharge the aquifer that our wells draw from. That's one of the, right. that's one of the problems. Um, and then we just have to look at the costs of what that's going to be. And then we have to look at the costs of making that direct connection. And, yeah. you know, well, that's in that could be potentially, uh, so, so that's what this study will do. It will look at, okay, if we build a wastewater treatment facility, this is probably what one of this size would cost if we did a regional one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, this is, you know, how much, you know, over the term that we could pay it for. This is how much the operational cost will be because, so don't forget, we're not just going to shave off that $3 million. We now have to, we've got to build a plant that we either operate through contractors or and stuff. So I still think it would be a savings. Um, and then you, you look at, okay, well, what's the, then you have a direct connection. What's the long-term cost associated with that? And, um, I mean, I can tell you, Steve, you know, just the eyeball analysis, um, we would save, you know, 20% on our sewer bills, which would actually bring it a just little bit. Just to go direct. Just to go direct, I'm yeah. sorry. Um, not having a wastewater treatment mm -hmm. facility. Um, but have a direct connection to the MWRA. And that actually brings us more in line with a lot of the communities. Um, really you know, it, was, it was kind of surprising. Not too many communities have this type of setup. Right. Yolanda? Yeah. So I, you know, I hear what Joe's saying, and I've certainly been one that has talked about, you know, we should do our own wastewater treatment plant. But I think it's for the, it's to the benefit of the taxpayers to look at doing the feasibility study and sure. looking at the difference of if we did our own wastewater treatment plant versus the direct versus staying with Framingham. I think it'll get us started toward the direction of one or the other. And I so I, I think it's good to do the feasibility study um, as, as presented because it may, I mean, I agree, having our own wastewater treatment plant, we'd keep the water here, if not in our aquifer, at least in the surrounding aquifers. But we also have to look at other things that we're doing, and if the cost is more effective to stay with the MWRA, but maybe go direct versus Framingham, I think we need to have a <coughs> clear picture of that. Okay. And I just want to get us back, and I, um, I also want to talk about the proposed rate increase because I think that's going to be important. So, um, what did Brittany say in her in her memos? Is, is about twelve dollars a quarter? Is that yep. the average? Yeah, twelve dollars a quarter. Right. So. Um, so it's something, and are you are asking us to approve the rate increase tonight? And why? Because why don't you just explain the timing a little bit? So just for the timing, uh, doing it tonight, we can put it on the second quarter water sewer bills. So, which is uh, otherwise they'd be on the third quarter. On the third quarter. The second quarter starting Wait, September, uh, October first. Mm -hmm. Is that the second quarter? So, so okay. even if we do it at our first meeting in September, that's going to be too late, too tight, or? Well, you got to pro. I mean, you've got to put everything in. You've got to put in all the rates and the munis and the water sewer utility billing info, all of that stuff. Well, I just want to. So, I mean, part of it. I think people have to be satisfied they have enough information or questions have been answered uh, based on tonight's discussion. You know, and if people have reservations we should talk about that I do have a I notice that the revenue the meter revenue is not increasing over these years why is it's flatlined from this based on oh well that's the so sewer that's, user that's the forecast Rob so yeah that's we're keeping everything flat but why would they 
why would it be flat? Is that or is our meter revenue historically flat? Doesn't it just go up with growth and the new units and? Yeah, but we're not we're not growing as much as we did in the past. Yes. So you're not getting. So unless you adjust rates, you're not going to get more money because the really, the current. Has that been histor I mean, uh, historically true? Because I, I there's growth every year. Maybe there's, maybe maybe. Uh, you, you're forecasting no growth in permit or actually a decrease in permit revenue because right. growth has slowed down. But it seems like there's always new units are more usage every year, isn't there? I mean, I'm just doing, I mean, all the costs are being increased, but the revenue estimates on the meters are not. I mean, I guess I would just question that. I think realistically, we should expect some revenue growth. Does it ever go the other direction? Are, are we thinking it might through water conservation? Possibly, I suppose. I hadn't. Quite possibly. I think one of the reasons we're in this quandary now is that we have based a lot of our costs on those fixed rate on, on growth, mm -hmm. expecting growth. And More use of water. No, just like on the fixed costs and things. So things that aren't really directly related to flow, like permits and everything. I think our rate structure is reflective and dependent too much on those to subsidize flow rates. Flow rates. And I think that's why we are in the situation we're in right now, because when we haven't had this type of growth, the type of growth that we've experienced in previous years, we end up with this shortfall. Mm -hmm. And it's not a ton, but it, it's, you know, it makes a difference. Well, don't we also have a sewer moratorium in place? We do have a sewer moratorium. So it's not like we're place. adding mm -hmm. So we new. don't expect to add anything new. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. When was our last sewer increase? I believe it was last year. We didn't increase it two years ago. Two years ago. So we have been fairly consistently, though, making adjustments. Well, I think what happened before I got here, there was there was a big, there large big fluctuations. Drops. Yeah. Um, so you drop sometimes. What would happen is you drop the sewer rate and you jack up the water rate. Right. Um, or you wouldn't raise rates any at all for a year and then jack it up. Right. Um, and what we've tried to do so is more try steady to line it. Yeah. keep it steady. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not going to deny the fact that you know five and a half is is more than what we really want to do. Um, so on, on an average, the town of Ashland is paying MWRA and the town of Framingham a little over four million dollars a year. It's about it's about right. Mm -hmm. And we can't put that money towards paying off bonds to get our system going. That's, can, that's 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 my thought. That's my thought process. Yeah. You know, I don't like but being a puppet on the string. And basically that's what we have. Okay. Thoughts or questions on the so we're being asked to uh, just when did we last increase sewer rates? Last year. Last was it year. Last year? How much was it? Is that the one we you think remember? Was it like the two or three percent? I believe you chose the second option. I remember there yeah. were three options, three options that we took. I think we took the middle. So this yeah. is tough. Two or three percent last year, and then five point five this year. That's and this is only going to this is only going to last for two years. According right. To That's this. right. So we're going to be visiting so this again in a couple, couple years. To move on to the actions that we're talking about tonight. To Absolutely. Within the two-year period, so that way we, well, and we have some path. And I would say that we put a time frame on that study, saying, okay, we're going to spend this money, and, and within <coughs> six months, we'll have, have an options. understanding of what our options are moving forward. I think that's well, reasonable. And I think it's good. Uh, I'm glad you put forward this, you know, we should look at all our options. And, and, oh, yeah. and really, this, this thing with Framingham really, an old, old thing that we really need to resolve. We, yeah, we need to resolve and we need to find a way to wean ourselves off of it because right. it's no, just it's been, not, it's not sustainable. It's been a horrible thing for a long time, yeah. or a yeah. tough thing. Yeah. Any other, any discussion or questions um, before we ask to vote on this? So if we suggested cutting that five, or five and a half to two and a half, that would really skew all your figures to the point where we wouldn't have two years. We'd be in the red probably in, in a year. Well, we'd be in the red this in year. This year. This year. Yeah. Okay. All right. And what's the, you know, is, is the, what's the status of the of the balance in the account? Um, it's around three hundred thousand, three fifty. So um, we could eat in, eat into it for a while if we want, if we thought we could. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I will say that we depleted that pretty significantly. I mean, we were up around 800,000, I believe, um, and we ended up using a big, well, all of that, 400,000 that we paid for the Girl Scout property, we took out of sewer. Right, right. Um, yeah. The balances are getting down. So, I mean, I guess the thought would be if we could we could schedule a, a smaller rate increase this year with the understanding we'll probably do it again next year, like two and a half and two and or two and three or something like that. But if you're saying that, mm. would that lead to it? You know, just a way of making it a little more incremental. Yeah, I've never, I've, wow, I've never. <laughs> um, we could do that. I wouldn't recommend it, um, but I know the position that that you're in. Sure. Um, I don't think I've ever advised dipping into into oh, reserves. You think if, if we say approve three percent, you're pretty sure we'd have to dip into the the fund balance oh, absolutely. to continue operating. Absolutely. Um, okay. And it's just it was so. I mean, if we were talking about water, it's a it's a different issue. And, and that's where I was just going to ask. Yeah. I was just going to ask that question. Are our water rates now able to sustain the usage that we have and the bills that we have right now so that we don't have to go up on our water rates for one or two years or possibly three years? I don't want to make that long a commitment, but I, okay. I'm, we're not asking for a water rate increase this year. Okay. And I would have to look at next year. Okay. I would feel more comfortable knowing that we at least had a two year window before we even. For the water it. rates? Yeah. So that way, at least, at least, the, you know, we're not we're not nailing the tax rate. We're not nailing ourselves, for God's sake, for that matter. You know. So. And we, and of course, we'll be asked this question about you know we're making sure that we're properly allocating costs and we're not mm -hmm. moving costs into the water sewer funds from general government. Okay. So are we ready to? Yeah, I think. Uh, yes. Not not pretty, but. No, I think we're. Uh, Is this one I can vote against and then badmouth everybody? <laughs> you can. Oh no, I can't. Oh, no, you can. You just well, can't you're undermine. gonna have to. You're gonna have to pay the fee. You, you, pay the you fee. can talk well, about against it. Playing all you want. Right. You can pay, pay it. it. Pay it. Right. We're gonna have a pool top off uh, charge. Yeah. yeah, and then you can go on Facebook. And talk That's about right. Especially with <laughs> the weather, we haven't had to have <laughs> that. So. I know. This is true. Well, you know, it is. It's, it's a, it is a bitter pill yes. because we don't see any relief until we act on something of whether it's a wastewater treatment plant or a direct connect yeah. or a combination thereof. So, and like I said before, I'm the first one to brag about our you know tax bills and everything, but our sewer water bills are good. Sewer bills are high. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. you know, we are addressing a lot of things uh, on this board that are the result of questionable policies in the past. You guys have spoken about this, this re mm -hmm. reliance on Framingham thing. That was a short-term solution that turned into a long-term problem. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we've done that with a number of things in the past. And, and when you try to correct those things, there is an, an initial pain yeah. in order to get to a more sustainable point uh, in the future. There's just no way around it. Yep. Uh, one last, I guess, observation is as people conserve water, they will also use less sewer use. So right. I don't know. Do we, is, do we, are we thinking there's going to be much of an impact? So technically, if we use less water and l less sewer gallonage, uh, the rates the meet, they won't be as much revenue to support our existing. Yeah, th that's that's kind of you, before when we would talk about increases. I always said it's just as much an art as it is a science because yeah you if you jack the rates up especially on high users more than you know the lower level users or the ones that don't use as much they end up you're forcing them to conserve and then you don't have the revenue coming in and then you have to raise rates across yeah. the board so yep. finding that balance the conservation is, just, is an interesting uh, question yeah. dilemma with with rate setting and yeah, absolutely. All right, so now you can make this one. <laughs> <laughs> no volunteers. For this one. No, that's okay. I, again, I, I think we all are not happy with this, but based on the information, and I think knowing that we can, we're going to do the study to look at what our options are to see how we can save money in the future, or at least provide a better option. I think that's important. 
I move that we approve the 5.5 percent sewer uh, increase for fiscal year 2019. Well, it's the third, it's certain quarter, right? I forget. Didn't you say? Second? Yeah, it'll start second. Yeah, it'll start, start in the second quarter. All right. Do I have a second on that? Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Yeah, begrudgingly. <laughs> Opposed. All right. Hearing none. Uh, motion. Passed to five zero. And I, and I would just say agree. that if we could make sure we have a study, you know, back to us by either December or January, so we can start looking at what we want to do options, moving yeah. forward. Yeah. 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 Just text the dog and say get it done. I'll talk to Doug. So, <laughs> good idea, <laughs> Doug. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, we won't. All right. The next one: discuss and vote to remove the skate park at one twenty five Front Street. Hmm. Okay. So I'll. Uh, this was, I believe. Um, requested by uh, Steve Mitchell. So I'll turn this over to Steve to talk about exactly. his thoughts here. It's, uh, it's been a little while since we talked about the skate park and, and options about it. Uh, you know, from my observations, and I think from a lot of folks, it's, it's not really being utilized currently. Uh, I think it's probably for, for a host of reasons. Uh, it's certainly the, the equipment is old. Um, I think uh, looking at some of the other communities that have put skate parks in, uh, you know, the, the, the industry or the, or the equipment uh, and the layouts, the design have, have evolved. And I'm certainly not suggesting that Ashland kids go somewhere else to, to do their skating. Uh, but at the same time, I think it's fair to say that, that this current setup isn't, isn't satisfactory, certainly to, I think, skaters. Uh, so I'm asking the board to, to discuss it and, and to vote to remove the current uh, skate park with the condition that we relocate the skate park and that we, uh, as a board, we, we engage to relocate it and to, to work to achieve that. And I think there's some, uh, I know Joe has, has uh, worked on this in the past. I think there's, there's locations that are that are appropriate, and I think it's just a matter of the board, uh, you know, pushing this forward. And uh, so that's my that's my request, and uh, open it up. Okay. Thoughts, or ideas, responses. To this, Joe. Is anybody looking at me for? Oh. It's all right. I took my comp pill. I'm all set. <laughs> Commies. I took my comp. Commies. Yeah. Okay. All right. There. Uh, thank you. Um, about three or four years ago, we did get a, we did have a committee, which consisted of uh, John Featherston, myself, and uh, Dave uh, Magurian um, from the DPW, head of the DPW at the time, and we sat down and discussed the location of a new skate park. Um, we looked at different locations in town. One of the concerns that we had was making sure that it was in the in the uh, it was visible for the police as they drove by. We didn't want it to be in a hidden location or in an area that wasn't frequently monitored by the police department. So, which was one reason why the location on Front Street was chosen for that specific reason. The first location was at the tennis courts, um, but because of noise complaints and, and other things that were going on and the, the need and requirements of a community garden, that was moved. and actually there was no discussion on it it was the equipment was up and taken stored at the dpw and nobody had any idea what was going on or why so that that ruffled a lot of people's feathers and it really upset a lot of a lot of the youth in town so with that john featherston and mike campbell decided that would resurrect the skate park and that's where you see over there uh is the equipment outdated without a doubt uh, i'm a little worried about the fact that someone could get hurt over there um, I'm just been a stickler because I just like being a stickler. And the location that we had agreed to at one time was if you looked at the pavilion on Summer Street, you have the kids spot for the younger kids on one side, and then you would look at the left side of the pavilion where that, that sloping grade down. You could put a skate park there. We measured it out 30 by 70, which is a standard size skate park 
for what we were looking for, it would fit there very nicely. At the time, the figures that we, we went out and got figures, the cheapest figure that we got was $48,000. For the equipment that had already been purchased, we were just going to replace the, the equipment that had been previously purchased and put it there. Uh, a lot of work was going to be done by the DPW. Uh, they would have to install it. They were going to hot top it, level it off, and do the things that needed to be done. If they can't do that, I'm assuming that this price is probably going to double because of the uh, getting somebody in it that knows how to do and install a skate park. Framingham just put $200,000 in their skate park down off of uh, um, Farm Pond, yeah, yeah. Farm, Farm, Farm Pond. Pond. And, and it's, a, it's a beautiful location. I was just down here uh, today after I had to go and see some folks, but, and it's all cement, and that'll take forever to, you know, to, to go away. But, um, again, like anything else, it's in the forefront police monitor it there's lighting near the home nine yards you have lighting at the, at the at the pavilion you have street lighting there the only problem that we would have is a concern um we also have cameras there now too because the pavilion is now equipped with security cameras right. nice so um and i don't want to say someone donated the equipment to us and we we put it up with uh, the help of uh sergeant ed berman so that it's up there so it, it can be monitored as well so that alleviates that the only concern that I would have is the noise that would be generated um, for the folks that live on Cherry Street side because they'll you know they'll, they'll be maybe a hundred 150 feet away if it's brand new with the whole nine yet so the possibility of maybe having to put some sort of natural fencing up along there um, to just help as a noise barrier but not completely block it off because then you can't see anything from from the from the side so that's just one of the things that we were talking about but that's that was the map that we were looking yeah, at i remember that discussion yeah so uh, but this was this is all the original paperwork that we had and um so, so that, okay, that's so what we're looking at so i mean i i don't have a problem issues. moving it but and i and i appreciate steve's we had a little conversation prior to um, I just want to make sure that it doesn't go on the back burner, uh, and maybe if we can, if I can get more figures and present it to you in another week or so, yeah. uh, or maybe at our next meeting, and then do a presentation in front of CPC and see if we can get some recreational sure. monies to help sponsor that or, or get it started. Right. Um, maybe that's something we can look at in the springtime. I okay. wouldn't say anything now in the fall because it, it's the season's past yeah. that I, I don't want to rush it if I'm going to do it we're going to do it I would like it done well, let's right. do so it right and let's uh and I you know it's interesting I've done a little little homework on skate parks knowing nothing about them but uh apparently concrete is the preferred it is preferred to, or the yep. state of the art now because of the maintenance factor right. and so on I don't know if it's it's if whether you fall on metal or on concrete I'm sure it hurts the same way but yeah. either way but but I think, Joe, to go to your, your point, I think, you know, we, uh, and I'm certainly willing to help you with this, I think we should pursue this and, and work on it mm -hmm. uh, intentionally and, and get it done. And I think uh, Stone Park appears to be a, a natural uh, location for it. Um, I think the size that you're talking about uh, seems to be more than generous mm -hmm. for, for what's, what's right. needed. So let's just work on it. Uh, then you have the parking, you have the bathrooms that are there. Um, you know, the actual day committee. Uh, and it's it's visible. And I mean, that's it is visible. It, it's all extremely visible. Right. Yeah. You allowed well, yeah. So I, I want to say I agree with both Steve and, and Joe. I think it's time to move the one from Front Street. It was a good temporary location. It lasted a little bit longer. Certainly what you're seeing now in skate parks is concrete versus the metal. And I think the the Stone Park, that's where some of that's where our recreation is. It makes sense to on one side of the pavilion you have the area for the young kids, on the other side of the pavilion you have the area for the older kids to be able to, to do the skate park. I think to Joe's point, we'd probably want to look at some kind of vegetation along the back side of it to help the people on Cherry Street because I know when it was um, on the other side there were people right across the street and there was concern so there was there was a group of individuals a group of youths that were living mm -hmm. at the the very end of uh park road and uh summer street mm -hmm. and uh they were getting their friends from uh the neighboring town 
mm. and they were gang related, so that was their new. Ah. There was the new hangout. Yeah. So needless to say, there was there was some reason for concern. Right. Um, these kids aren't the same kids. They're you know, oh, they they're boys. Years, they so. want they want to have fun. And to be very honest with you, kid spots too small for them. Oh yeah. You know the the equipment that's there, and you know it's a shame because the kids from the middle school come down during during after half days or whatever. And you know, there's no place for them to, to have fun. To there's nothing. Right. There's absolutely nothing. So what do they do? They kids, they see a swing set. They're going to go on the swings. Unfortunately, yeah. it doesn't. They're too old. They're, they're too old. They're too heavy. They're too big. That doesn't. It, it doesn't justify them. You know. So a lot of the things that we took away, we took away from their vibe. So you're seeing there. a demand, or it sounds like we're seeing a demand and interest in a skate park to, currently. To, well, let's put it this way: if if we build it, they'll come. Right. Yeah. I think it's interesting. Uh, I was telling Michael and actually Yolanda earlier, yeah. there's a Maya, who's our insurance uh, company, uh, or one of them, is uh, they have a document about skate parks in particular because they, they must insure them. Sure. Mm -hmm. So they have a formula that they use to, to guesstimate how many skaters potentially you have in your town. It's based on the population. And the example they use is, is happen to be Marlboro. But in our case here, there's a formula to, based on population, um, a certain factor gives you the uh, potential or the, the, the skating population as such, and then you multiply that by a, by a percentage, and that's your hardcore skater population. And then you multiply that by a factor to get the proper size skate park. So the skate park that, you're, that you suggested is really Oh, that's interesting. Pre in line close, with, yeah. uh, with right. our pop potential right. population. So Did they talk about older guys that take their kids skate for, for no. out of the garage and go down <laughs> there one time. <laughs> I had a skateboard when I was young. <laughs> All right, Carl, did you? Uh, no, I, I'm in favor of uh, exploring what our options are going forward and removing the, the current one. I agree with what everyone said. All right, so I think, uh, so we're generally, we're talking about more or less immediate removal of the current equipment mm -hmm. and, a, and a longer term or a plan well, to move ahead. Moving, moving and move with forward the plan. with the plan yes. for, us yeah. for a different location. And so we're not going to ask for a committee or any other public. We're just going to, we think we pretty much know what needs to be done yeah. Yeah. based on the so. older plan. I think okay. Joe has got the foundation yeah. to start yeah. getting just some get prices the figures and so on. Those right. figures are from four right. years ago. Sure. So. Okay. Yeah. Three years ago, I should say. All right. Is this a motion again? We have a motion. Yep. Someone ready to do it? I move that we remove the current state park skate park at 125 Front Street and that we look at, a feasible, at um, creating a new skate park at Stone Park. Which sums it up. Yep. Do I have a second, second. on that? Those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. Oh, five nil. Thank so you. Congratulations. We can yeah, have thank you. Thank you. Public Works look at yeah. removing. I know. That. I yeah, I would ask that we try to get it removed by September 1st, and the reason is is that the uh, there's a uh, uh, one of the it's not SNAP, but one of the assistance programs uh, for low-income folks with, uh, with food um, is having a, a ceremony at the farmer's market on the 1st, and the Senate president will be there to uh, give a presentation. So uh, if we can get it done by then. Maybe if we leave it there, she'll give us money. <laughs> oh boy. I'm always thinking. I'm always thinking. I'm always thinking. Right. Good suggestion. Okay. Right. Thank you. Final item on the agenda is to uh, discuss and vote transfer a one acre envelope in Warren Woods from care and custody of Board of Selectmen to the Conservation Commission. And this was requested by Carl Hackinson. So, Carl, did you want to talk a little bit about this? Yeah, when um, a couple of years ago, it, at one point, uh, Warren Woods was two parcels. It was 100 acres, and there were roughly 18 acres. And the 100 acres was under care and custody of the Conservation Commission. The 18 acres were under care and custody of the Board of Selectmen. We changed that a few years ago uh, because the uh, Conservation Commission was uh, taking uh, care of the property um, under the uh, CR and, uh, and the Land Stewardship Committee. We reserved uh, that one acre um, 
envelope at the front of Warren Woods uh, in anticipation of maybe moving the Valentine barn over there. At that time, that Valentine development was going forward and there was some talk about taking the Valentine barn down uh, and, and reassembling it at Warren Woods. Uh, that's no longer happening. Um, and so I think similar to, to the, the, uh, the Warren Woods ad hoc committee, uh, the, the purpose for, for creating that one acre envelope is, is no longer there. Let's just get you on. So as I appreciate the idea of this discussion, I would like us to hold off on this vote until we have our full discussion of the different properties that we have. I, I agree. I think you know the barn will definitely not be going there because it's now going to be staying on the Valentine estate. Um, but I think there's still possible discussion of what might what could be put there at the Val at the Warren Woods. We have 22 Elliott that I know we've been talking about making some kind of visitor center, but that hasn't been finalized. So I'd like to hold off on taking a vote on this to transfer it to conservation. And I thank them for taking care of it. Um, but I think I'd like to see it as part of our broader discussion of all our properties before we take a vote on this one well, acre. I would, That's all. I would suggest that um, that what we're trying to do as the Stewardship Committee and as the Conservation Commission is to set up a sustainable plan.